live what's going on guys welcome back to a grain of salt podcast uh doing a bit of a shorter episode mostly because jackson actually just came to me and he said he's got a story to tell me so why don't you just take it away man that's right i read about something really awesome so this actually regards one of nature's greatest mysteries that has baffled humankind for longer than i care to tell uh when you think greatest mysteries what do you think maybe how goats climb mountains yeah, you know, something like climate change that impacts us today, like maybe volcano, something like that. Yeah. Truth is, we actually have partial answers to all those questions. What we don't have answers to, though, is how eels reproduce. Nobody knows. No one's ever caught them mating. With all our technology in the oceans, in the lakes, no one has ever seen two eels mate, and we have no idea how they do it. And this story is amazing because it's essentially a cinematic universe of all of history's greatest thinkers coming in and giving their two cents on the story. An Avengers level crossover, but eels are the villain here. Absolutely. Um, so to start out, we have Aristotle. What did he think? He thought that eels came from the mud. They were just born out of the mud you know typical you know ancient greece yeah thousands of years ago we'll cut him some slack there <laughs> absolutely absolutely he did give us some good stuff uh another guy thought that uh, fish rub their scales on rocks and somehow this became eels i actually don't respect that opinion at all and i'm not even gonna say his name <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> but uh we actually have only recently understood anything about eels turns out and like we're talking like maybe 17th 18th Actually, probably just 18th and 19th centuries is when we finally discovered that eels have five different life cycles. So they have five different forms that they come in. Before, we thought these were entirely different species. Okay. Yeah. Um, so as we know, a freshwater eel, uh, where we, you know, if you're in America, if you're in Europe, you're catching these freshwater eels, you assume they're freshwater. Turns out they actually come from the ocean, saltwater. And at the end of their lives, they also migrate back to the ocean. They actually have one of the largest migration patterns of any marine animal. Hmm. Okay. So, like, they wait, they start ocean, then move to salt or freshwater, and then move back to the ocean? They're born in the saltwater sea, and they go to the freshwater lake uh, through, you know, various canals. And, uh, yeah, when they feel they're about to die, they go back to the sea to mate, although we don't know exactly how they mate of course. fair we just know their travel plans that's all we got <laughs> yep um so uh recently we found when they, they found this out i think it was like sometime in the 18th century uh this guy named schmidt uh hopped in his boat and he uh started catching these little baby eels that we now knew were eels and he started measuring them so by taking down these measurements and moving steadily across the atlantic ocean he found that they were getting smaller and smaller. So the trail is hot. And he keeps following these eels as they get smaller and smaller. He starts in Europe, and he makes it all the way across the Atlantic Ocean, all the way to Canada. But they can still get smaller, so he keeps heading down south. Also, um, we know now, at least, that uh, e eels prefer to mate in warmer waters. So south kind of makes sense, go near the equator. Yeah, for sure. Anyway... He found that uh, eels uh, get their smallest, or the baby eels or the youngest eels are at their smallest uh, in the Sargasso Sea, which is kind of off the coast of Florida. Okay. Uh, it's actually ha home to the Bermuda Triangle. It's where all the ocean currents in the Atlantic meet and swirl around. It's the warmest, saltiest water, uh, and it's apparently where these baby eels are if it's a messed up story you always have to mention florida in there somewhere <laughs> <laughs> that does seem to be a yeah a for sure there. yeah it's not it's not their fault though not this time anyway um so um he finds them he discovers that they're in the sargasso sea so at this point it should be easy to just look and see what's happening you can't find them. you can't find them mating Hmm. So okay. we're, we're still baffled. We still have no idea what's happening. 
And then one of the most famous psychoanalysts in history comes along. Sigmund Freud. Sigmund Freud. You got... You, he's, he's just too insane not to be part of this. <laughs> Sigmund Freud takes it upon himself. Uh, the guy who says that you're trying to marry your mother and won't stop saying that. The guy who I think is addicted to cocaine. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that yeah. was... I mean, his theories, you got... I mean, penis envy. You said the Irish were uh, impervious to the psychoanalysis uh, because they like to tell stories. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, he had to have some say in this eels thing. I mean, say what you will about the guy. Just to deviate a little bit, Freud's, Freud's theories were accepted by a large number of people for a long, long time. And it's because he does tend to draw logical conclusions. And he's not afraid to get in there and get his hands dirty. So when he heard that we don't know how eels reproduce, he took it upon himself. Every day, he would go down to the coast as the fishermen were coming in on the boats, uh, you know, right before sunset. Yeah. Uh, and he'd buy the eels off them because they didn't want eels. No one really eats eels. Mm -hmm. So uh, he'd buy as much many eels as he could. And then he'd take his, the eels back to his home and he would dissect them. What was he looking for, you think? I, I got I'll nothing. save you a guess. He was looking for eel testicles. <laughs> Such a Freud thing to do. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't find them in the first one or the second one or the third one or the 56th one. He <laughs> dissected over 400 eels. And I don't know about you, but if you admitted that you dissected 400 <laughs> eels looking for eel testicles and you found nothing, I might try to minimize that number a little bit. So I'm going to assume that he dissected way more eels than that. <laughs> and they were all just the same kind, just this freshwater eel? Uh, yeah, well, this is actually coming from the, uh, he would try saltwater and freshwater. Okay. He, he, was, he diversified his portfolio, right? Okay. Uh, so he gets sometimes from lakes, sometimes from oceans. He wasn't finding anything, right? So yeah. he had to uh, get out there. Sure. Um, anyway, after dissecting all these eels, of course, he finds no eel testicles hmm so the mystery still remains how do <laughs> eels reproduce one of the leading theories and it's not uh, something i've read about in huge detail um mostly because every you know explanation i've found is very vague mm -hmm. uh but essentially they uh, flutter around each other really rapidly and somehow um sperm is launched in the air. We don't know from where. This is just an assumption from like a hypothesis. Yeah. And then it floats around the water and somehow impregnates uh, a female th uh, eel. And this wasn't a Freudian theory. That was somebody else? That was someone else. Yeah. Okay. If that makes you feel better about it. It's still it very vague. I don't really think they know what they're talking about. But yeah, if that's someone other than Freud, I think the theories and like the whole concept of eels mating, it's just like we got no idea. If that's more of an intellectual take than Freud was giving us, then <laughs> then I think that's weird. Yeah. He wasn't afraid to get his hands dirty. He I, got in there. <laughs> I suppose so. 400. I mean, he's a psychoanalyst. He has no business. Being no. In, like, he studies humans. He studies human behavior. And he took that right to eels. Yeah. He was like, I, and by the way, sex obsessed. Oh, absolutely. All his theories, all his most famous theories are sex obsessed. Of course, he would be the guy to walk down the harbor and be like, I can figure this out by myself. All I got to do is get my hands on some eel testicles. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Freud's Austrian, and I, he, I know he like lived in London for most of his life, which is, I'm guessing, where he probably exactly. was he, doing the harbor work. He was studying European eels. Yeah. Although I'd imagine that people have done it with American eels. Uh, American and European eels do come from the Sargasso Sea. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. We don't know. It's one of nature's I mean, greatest mysteries. <laughs> apparently. Um, what point in uh, Freud's life was it? Do you know? Like, or like, what's the time frame here? Probably a bad time. <laughs> it's a dark time in his life. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine you're in a good headspace. Yeah. If you're like, man, the guy to... was Tony Montana levels of coke obsessed, though. I'm <laughs> guessing he's probably like, maybe he ran out one week and he's like, I gotta, gotta dissect some meals right now. <laughs> That's, that seems like a logical next step. Well, I, you know, I, I don't want to relate to the guy too much, but I kind of get it because how do we not know with all our technology, with all our ingenuity as humans, 
how has this mystery remained for so long? It took us till the 18th century to understand that the different life cycles of an eel are different, are not different species, but an eel. Yeah, I, I honestly, oh. I got nothing there. And like even, like they obviously wouldn't lay eggs or something like that because we would have found that before. There would have been some evidence of that. Right, yeah. So, Unless, uh, I mean, eels I do know, this is just my best guess. Eels I know are like very like deep, deep, uh, like water, uh, like they inhabit it, like lower areas of water pressure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm guessing that like it's just so deep that we actually can't well, figure the, out where they are. That's actually saltwater eels, and you're absolutely right about that. But mm -hmm. freshwater eels actually prefer inland, and it's just so amazing how they go from freshwater to saltwater, and they change all their habits. Because in freshwater eels, they uh, they tend to stick closer to inland. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's uh, that's all I got for this one. This little mini episode. No, um, I uh, I have something to segue off of that, actually. You though. do? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm not too sure if you guys know this. We're uh, we're residing in Ottawa. So it, this one hits a little close to home for us. Uh, but in the Rideau Canal, um, so it connects to the Rideau River. Um, and then I think from there, it connects into larger bodies of water, obviously. But uh, there used to be a huge eel population in the Rideau River. And they uh, hunted these in the 1830s through to the 1880s pretty excessively. Um, and in the 1880s, they found a large eel that was between uh, 10 and 20 feet. So they they don't have pictures of it, obviously, because 1880s. They do have photography, but it's very limited. Um, I'm six foot. Like, yeah. I'm 5'11", 6 foot, something like that. Yeah, I'm 5'10", um, so that's like three times our size is like the... How long that eel is. Yeah, the best guesstimate of that. Um, that so that's in 1880s. Then the trail runs cold as we keep hunting the eels in the Rideau River and the Rideau Canal. Uh, obviously, the locks are built there. Um, so there's just like, there's expansion of, you know, uh, there's construction. The po population goes down. In 2015, a couple of Carleton students, shout out Carleton. Oh yeah, we went uh, there. Yeah, uh, Paul Boateng and uh, Brennan Gee, they did a research project to figure out uh, what kind of fish were living in the Rideau Canal okay. uh, and where it connects to Dow's Lake. Uh, so they, were, they put up a couple cameras, they attached them to some drones and they were searching around through the water. And they found something on camera that Based off the size, they said, like, there's no way this could be a fish. And based off the fins on the top, they estimated it to be an eel, which would make sense. There used to be eels in the waters. But the thing is, the size that it would be, uh, their best guess is between 10 and 14 meters or 30 to 42 feet long. Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah. Oh, really? So that's 2016. And that's that's kind of... Uh, there was another sighting of it, which, by the way, they've named the eel Elvis now. Like, this is a small body of water. Yeah. Like, the, the, you have Big Dow's Lake, but then it just goes into, like, a short little canal exactly. that's, like, a skating rink for half the year. Yeah, Dow's Lake is, uh, at its deepest point, it's 15 meters deep, so, like, 40 feet, 45 feet deep. Mm. Um, and the eel is also between 30 and 42 feet. So, like, it resides in... Uh, Dow's Lake for most of the time and then I guess when the canal freezes over it's kind of it's able to hunt throughout uh, the waters underneath the canal um, this monster how big did you just say 40 feet 30 to 42 feet is the uh, the guess for our our buddy Elvis the eel like how big is it is that like a hydro pool like uh, well a school bus is like kind of the the rough marker that people seem to use for things around 30 feet. I like that. Yeah. So uh, like eight feet larger than a school bus is like the uh, the high end point. There. And it's just swimming around. Yeah. I'm, like that's Canada's largest skating rink. Like people, hundreds of people go down there every day. And you're yeah, telling me there's it's packed. monster sea serpent just underneath. Yeah. And so if it was. I go canoeing in there actually in the summer. <laughs> there's kayakers there all the time. It's like people like really small vessels. They're. It's busy. Like, do you think that thing could take me out? Like, if I'm on a kayak. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I don't. I don't trust your chances against against the eel. That's, <laughs> that's thirty terrifying. to forty feet. And then, like, you I have think... a really hard time believing this. I just want to say, I've I've seen this story before, mm -hmm. and I did all the research, and it seems like they had a picture of it and everything, and it seems like no one's really disagreeing with this. 
Seems to be all, but like 40 feet in yeah. that. And then you got to think like how wide around it has to be in order to be like 30 to 40 feet. It's got to be at least a couple feet wide. Yeah, that's actually the most terrifying part. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like it can't be just like a pencil thin. No, no, yeah. exactly. Like um, it, typically it will be like, um, maybe like this. Yeah, I'd say about that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, and yeah, the last sighting of it was 2018 or at least uh, in the articles I could find um, in like an actual like research article. Uh, 2018 was the last sighting and that was uh, also on Dow's Lake. It uh, supposedly like it eats swans, it eats geese. It eats swans? Yeah. It's carnivorous. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, like, I don't know if, if I didn't you know found eels, this about eels. I didn't know okay. eels were that, I, I, heard, I knew they ate fish. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah. like full birds. Yeah, it attacks ducks, it attacks swans. And swans are huge. Yeah. But I believe it because it's 40 feet. Yeah, exactly. If you believe it's 40 feet, obviously. I don't really, but I want to. I want to. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 too insane to be true at some points. Like, this sounds like a Loch Ness monster story. It yeah. sounds exactly like the Loch Ness monster. Mm -hmm. And maybe, I don't know, maybe Canadians and people in Ottawa are kind of just trying to get their own version of that story, trying to bring some clout <laughs> to Ottawa. <laughs> I don't know, because you're doing like a fishing survey, right? As yeah. a student. Yeah. Like, personally, I wouldn't want to be the one to come out and say, without indisputable proof, mm -hmm. I found a 40-foot eel. You yeah, know? and that's the thing. These weren't even, uh, I believe they weren't even like master students. They were just doing like some like marine biology, like regular research for their undergraduate degrees. Oh, really? Yeah. So like they didn't publish like a thesis or, or anything on this. Um, oh, really? It's kind of just like, oh, what the hell? We kind of we found something. If I was them, I, I would revisit that. You know, aside from a school. Assignment. Yeah. I gotta I gotta go eel hunting. Yeah. Ever seen I, river monsters? Oh, absolutely. We could yeah. do this. We could. I don't believe it's true though. I I hate to say it, it's just that big. Yeah, especially because like the locks are like there's so many sets of locks along the canal there that like it's trapped there. And I mean, I guess it has no natural predators because it is trapped there. Yep, and I mean tons of fish to eat. Yeah, and if it's if it's anything like uh, crocodiles are, it like it just keeps growing. If it doesn't have any natural predators. Yeah, if it doesn't die, it just keeps growing. Yeah, um, crocodiles actually get too big. Uh, like eventually, like they'll get so big that they just can't move fast enough to get their prey. Hmm. I wonder if that's the case with the eel, or does it just get stronger? Because like crocodiles, you know, they sit in the water, they wait for like a really really quick attack. Yeah. Whereas an eel, I feel like. I don't know, maybe a bit of a chase. Like, well, that thing's the... not hiding. No, and I was trying to figure out what the normal size of like just the like the American eel is. Uh, and it was like three feet seems to be like the longest it would go. So like 10 times that would be yeah. what this would be. That is a Loch Ness monster. Story. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, like that is incredible. But it's been like it's been seen attacking geese and attacking ducks. And I need video. I need video evidence. There's none. Eh? I don't have that, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, like, the chances are that you'd have your phone out. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. But if only we had Freud around for this. Freud would have been so hands on with yeah. this. He would have wrestled this. Oh, thing. yeah. We would have seen Freud out like Dow's Lake just putting yeah. on the scuba gear every weekend. He's got like a lasso. He's standing <laughs> at the side. And he's just... <laughs> yeah. No, this is this goes to have this has Freud written all over it. For yeah. sure. Captain Ahab from uh, Moby Dick. <laughs> Absolutely. But like Freud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Coked up to no end. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever gets the job done, I need to know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I got for you. That's amazing. Yeah. This turned out to be way, way better <laughs> yeah. than I thought it was originally <laughs> going to be. That was a great cr contribution. But I mean, hey, thanks for thanks for tuning into this one. Uh, tell us what you think of Freud. If he uh, has any credibility today, uh, tell us what you think of the Ottawa eels. Do you believe the eel exists? And how do you think eels reproduce? We'll okay, see you next well, week. <laughs> keep keep a PG in the comment section, please. <laughs> yeah. All right, bye. <laughs>